This is Planning for Writing Success. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Kara and I'm joined by my colleague Heidi. We are going to be presenting um, Planning for Writing Success on one of our Back to School 2022 mini courses. So we thank you for being here. If you haven't had a chance to watch our other um, webinars, we've got some more mini courses that are coming. So if we go to the next slide, Heidi, we can certainly talk about the next one we have, which is going to be Writable 101 on September 14th. For those of you that um, are unfamiliar with Writable or interested in knowing a little bit more about Writable is, Writable helps you with your daily writing practice, feedback and assessment, and helps you with the next take the next steps to your instruction. We've included a video on this slide. You'll have access to this slide um, later, and you can watch the video at your leisure. The first thing we're going to do now is going to talk about what kind of classroom do you relate to the most. So I want everyone to take a look at this slide, and I want you to decide and in chat which one most resembles the um, classroom that you currently are doing if you're a leader or if you're a teacher. So classroom A, is that what your classroom looks like when it comes to writing instruction or classroom B? So I'm going to pause for just a second. Wonderful. And there's no right or wrong answer because Writable can uh, support either one of these classrooms. It's just that we like you to get focused on what we're going to talk about with the writing. All right, we're going to go ahead and move on and we're going to talk a little bit about your writing vision. So on the next slide, we put a few questions together about when you're thinking about creating your writing vision, what does that actually look like? And so these, um, and we're not going to go through these questions because they're on your slide for you, but what do you want your classroom to look like? What do you want your, your building writing instruction to look like? What do you want your district writing instruction to look like? And it's really important that you tie your vision into your district and building initiatives. It's important that you determine your milestones for success. It's important that you think about how you are going to monitor um, both your writing and then how your success is. All right. So basically what we want to do is we want to take you into what Writable can do for implementation models. Heidi is going to start showing you some of the most common ways that our, our districts and our classrooms are using Writable. And um, Heidi, it's all you. Great. Well, welcome everyone. I'm really excited to see some familiar names on our call here. And yeah, just to give you an overview, if you're newer to Writable, maybe you're in the district team or a school level leader or even a teacher sitting in your classroom, where do we kind of fit, right? That's what we're going to talk about. Um, high level, and there is this little implementation planning guide that you can download and grab if you want to work through this, maybe with your team. Um, but we tend to get used in three ways, right? So one is couple times a year, maybe three or four times a year as a common writing benchmark. So that's a great way to go if you just want to get a sense of how are my students writing across a district or a school and where do I want to like shore up my instructional best practices, right? Um, this next row is more day-to-day -day writing practice, tying into your core curriculum. This is the ins and the outs of getting as much writing as we can into those daily moments that your ELA blocks, which are already so packed, um, because this is really where you're going to get the most growth from what we find, as well as this differentiated practice one. So this would be supplementing your instructional practice with some really intentional differentiated assignments, giving different levels of scaffolding to different students, um, assigning assignments for individual practice and reteaching and, and great best practices like that. So that's just at a kind of 10,000 foot level. Now, if we go, well, what does this look like in the classroom, right? So now you're in a, a unit and we just wanted you to see how, um, especially for those of you who do own a core curriculum, how do we fit into that, right? Because you have a lot of things at your fingertips that you're pulling from, from a resource perspective. Um, Writable is kind of this blue line that runs across here. So um, in, we're going to look at three examples today. Um, some folks are just coming in and doing, you know, at the end of an assess, at the end of a unit, using us for us an assessment, right? Some folks are using us for daily practice, kind of more at the beginning, in the middle of their um, instruction. And then some folks are tying us really heavily into their core curriculum, whether that be an HMH core curriculum or another resource or core that you guys use in your districts. So of course, along the way, you're going to be able to growth monitor, use our feedback tools, really develop that really time savings piece on how do I deliver effective feedback for my students. So that is um, at, a, at a glance, and we're going to refer back to this 
visual as we go through our three examples here. Um, so be kind of thinking about jotting down which one fits with where your goals are going in your school or district. Um, so we'll start just with how does a, a district use it just to do kind of the common assessments throughout the year. Um, and so, you know, here your goals might be, we tend to see two flavors of common assessments that are developed in Writable. One that really focuses on your state assessment. So if you're in a state where they're about to change your whole, uh, you know, Texas folks on the line, they're about to change your whole assessment. So working backwards from with an intentional set of rubrics that really align to your state. And some folks are really organizing around what are my district goals? Like let's set up those common assessments around district goals. Um, you can always pull resources and readings when you build these assessments from anywhere. That's what's super important. You can pull them from, and we'll see this, you know, um, a, an article from the web or from another core textbook. If you're an into literature or into reading customer with us, of course, you're gonna have all your core reading passages built right in. So why would someone choose this? It saves teachers a ton of time on grading and on just calibration of, we all start talking about skills the same way. You don't see one teacher saying something about hook and another teacher saying something about intro in a different way. You start to see those skills become common across the district. So um, this is an example of a district that, you know, again, you're seeing a little thing up here called my district. This is a really cool feature in Writable. It lets admins in Writable, so curriculum writers, you know, school admins or district admins, or even like a team lead we've had, um, share common assignments into these folders. So that way when teachers come in, it saves them so much time on prep because they just go to these folders and they grab what you've prepared for them, right? So here's an example of some that have been developed. Um, and this was in a, in a high school um, setting out here in California where I am. And um, let's just look at what one of those looks like. Um, so basically this, this coordinator and this team decided to pull in readings from all different sources. You can see, of course, they're sourcing at the bottom where they pulled this from, but they just cut and paste it in. But this is a common assessment. There's videos built in. There's a variety of media that the student is being asked to respond to. Um, they have then written their own custom prompt and they're doing some heavy scaffolding here because again, this is an assessment that they also are using as practice. They're not just saying, okay, I wanna simulate the real assessment. They're getting students ready for an assessment, right? So here they've got their planning and then they've got you know, the students move to writing. And most importantly, they've really worked hard and deliberately with their team on a common rubric that they love that really saves the teacher's time on grading and, and kind of gets that alignment going. So that's what, just one quick example of what um, an assessment example would look like. Um, so in this next area, and I noticed some of you on the phone are probably using this one with us. So this one is just, how do I use Writable if I don't want to attach to my core? And maybe I'm new to the program. I've got teachers that just want to work on daily writing. How do I just pull Writable in more as a supplement, right? Into part of my um, instructional unit here. So that is a great way to pull in daily practice, right? We all know that it's very hard to squeeze daily practice into your current ELA blocks. Um, we have, we're gonna show you something called journeys that helps you do that. Um, and it really allows for skill aligned and standardized ways for at least every teacher to work with intention, maybe in the same genre and just build towards, you know, what we call high fives or daily quick writes icebreakers, exit slips, that type of thing. So if that's all you, you know, and, and not necessarily worrying about how does it tie to my core. Maybe you're using a core and you know you're doing response to information, but you wanna actually, um, you know, save time in your ELA block and pull in something related to what you're doing in your core instruction, but maybe not as tightly linked as what we saw in the first example. Um, so two things here. So I'll first I'll open a sample of how quick and easy how, how would a piece of daily writing practice look in Writable? Well, um, they're all skill aligned. These are from our high fives. Um, we always say, you know, teachers bring your prompt and we help you with everything else. So this took, you know, literally probably 45 seconds to make, you know, the teacher comes in and writes a prompt. This could be respond to an image in science. You know, this could be write three details from the chapter we read last night. This could be, you know, something about, you know, cite two reasons that you notice bias in the article we just read in class. Even if that article isn't in writable, it's just a quick way of tying in more daily practice. So that's what that would look like. Um, but then where did they get this from? So how do I make one of these? Um, well, you're gonna go into writable and 
go into what we call journeys. So these are new this year. If you're um, if you've been with us for a while, this is basically just a way of moving through, you know, in our explore section, moving through a different journey by genre, kind of with some intention, right? So this would help me say, hey, I know that my unit is really responding to a piece of informational text. So I could move through and grab assignments that build from a quick write all the way up to an extended response and just grab and go, right? So to make the one I just saw, I go in and I just pick a skill area and write my own prompt and literally the system does everything else. So, and it really learns. So it'll start to show you where are my students mastering the skill and where are they still struggling? So if I'm gonna do a couple of these daily quick writes, maybe one you know, every week or two a week, um, it'll tell me where I need to go next, right? So that's a big focus for us is helping you, even if you're brand new to Writable and you don't quite have a district plan together yet, pulling a skill area, writing a quick prompt, and then you see what we just talked about on my screen, a very, very simple response, um, still skill aligned, right? So that, that's the second option. Third option is how do I put this all together? So this would be a district that, hey, a school or district, we have a lot of folks who are working with their core curriculum and they're taking writable and doing high fives and daily practice and they're working towards a common assessment, right? So, you know, and along the way they're, they're doing small groups, they're using our data to fuel their conferences and their small group breakouts and all sorts of great things. So what would that look like? And why would I do that? Well, that's a great um, way to go if you're really trying to, you know, create those routines of practice. You're really trying to tie to a pacing guide that maybe you've already established. So you've spent all summer making those elaborate pacing guides and curriculum maps that you do in Excel and Word and all those places. And you really want Writable to fit right into what your goals are. So that's great. You already have goals. Let us help you reinforce them. Right. Um, and, and most importantly, you know, writing is the most cumulative skill that a student can use to show what they've read, what they know, whether it be in a content area or in um, ELA. Right. So this is really putting it all together. And this is going to save your teachers on prep time because they're relying on using writable right alongside their core curriculum and pacing. And it's going to save them a ton of prep time and worry about how do I make sure from building to building and from student to student, I have equity in my expectations, right? Which is important. Um, so here we're looking at a district in Texas that again, going back to that, my district folder, they're being very intentional and they're prepping some additional resources that, that fit right alongside their core curriculum, which is into reading. So they use into reading, they work through the passages um, and the writing prompts, but on top of that, they're really intentional about how do I work up towards the star? So what they're gonna do, that's their, their state assessment. They're every nine weeks assigning um, a piece of assessment practice, but they're also giving their teachers a modeling option. So in instruction, they're saying model one of these readings and these, you know, this way of answering the questions, work through the reading, work through, you know, citing evidence, work through pulling textual evidence out, do that as a model, then assign at the end of nine weeks, the assessment. And then along the way, let's tie in some high fives, those things we just saw in Writable, the quick writes along the way that tie to building the knowledge and the comfort of you know, writing those short constructed responses. So what would that look like? Um, well, just kind of open it up. So this is now kind of at the end of their unit. What would a student be doing every nine weeks? This is a third grade that we're looking at and they would be reading they would be moving through these different tabs and doing kind of multiple choice questions sprinkled in are their short constructed responses, which won't look new to them because they've done a couple high fives along the way. Um, and then they're moving over towards their extended response. And that's where they're, they're putting it all together. So can you write two or three paragraphs now? At the beginning of the year, that's really hard. So maybe they're starting with a paragraph and they're working up to two or three. Most importantly, we're aligning to um, a district, in this case, a state rubric, but sometimes, you know, you'll see district rubrics in here. So those rubrics are super important to just make sure everyone's grading the same way and everyone's kind of looking at those skills the same way. So that is our third option. Now, as you're reflecting on this, I, we went through a lot and we went through it fairly quickly. So we just want to pause and reflect and maybe get some chat going. You notice two, two things here. One, if you're a district team or a school team that is right away like, hey, I have a reading assessment and I really want to get great at a writing assessment, I'm going to start from assessment 
and work in to practice. We see that all the time. Start with three or four assessments a year, get them loaded into the My District page, then build in some daily practice that reinforces, continuing to reinforce maybe a core curriculum or a routine that you're doing in your instruction. The other way that we just saw was how do I work from daily practice and then get more involved with Writable? Because we really do grow with you and we really can wrap around any goal you have, any you know state initiative. Um, I noticed there's someone on with us from Utah. I know you have like a portrait of a graduate state initiative. You could wrap around that, right? So be thinking about what are my district my state goals, what are some of those common things? Maybe writing across the curriculum is big for you this year, right? So think about those goals and you could start assessment and go to practice, or you could start with daily writing practice and then later kind of evolve into more common assessments and growth monitoring and kind of looking at that data. So, um, and then the second thing to be asking yourselves is what do I already own, right? We never wanna be um, someone that comes in and makes you have to start from scratch. We're reinforcing the core curriculum you already own. So whether that be an into literature or an into reading um, from HMH or that's something else, we wrap around all the big ones and all the small ones, right? So it's as easy as pulling a reading resource in or pulling a rubric in and really being intentional about supporting what you already own or not. You can decide to just start totally supplemental and work towards that over time. So, um, it, it, you know, implementing any platform, you know, has some similar key steps. And so we wanted to make sure we call those out for you. So, so based on what you've heard so far is you want your district implementation team. Now, if you're in a building, you're going to have a few people inside your building also. So regardless of whether you're building implementation or district implementation, you're going to want to have your core team. You're also going to want to think about your um, users. Where do your users fall in the adoption life cycle? You're always going to have the users that are going to uh, be early adopters, and you're going to have those that are going to need a little bit more proof. So it's always good to think about who are those people. Um, communication, communication, communication. We cannot say that enough. Communication matters. We want to make sure the messaging is the way that you want it to be. They, you want to think about the milestones. You want to think about what's next, that helps keep the anxiety level down when you're thinking about a new project. Um, a training plan. We always recommend that you do systematic training throughout the year, not a one and done. You chunk it just like you do when you teach with students. So we wanna make sure that you're thinking about a training plan that provides quality throughout the year. And then a support plan. How do you support your users? And one of the really nice things, and we've included that in, in this presentation is, we have live chat for every teacher. You have access to ask us questions and the questions can be everything about the app or if you wanted to talk to somebody about your implementation, just let us know and we can make sure that happens. And as a leader, you are the instructional leader in your building or at your district level, you model. You need to model that writing matters, you know, and not necessarily that you're gonna be doing assignments in Writable, but modeling matters, we know that. And then building a community. Writable has a community, but also put a community together in your building inside your district. So those are some of the key implementation steps that we recommend. They're pretty standard for any, um, for any um, implementation, but we find that these to be really helpful. If yeah, you go to the I'm next slide. Add, uh, okay, yeah, I just to quickly add, like, um, so for building a community, I mean, there's, there's usage reports in Writable that you can go in and see who are my early champions that are using it pull them into an interesting way of, you know, getting into a training. If you don't have a lot of set training days, people have been really creative about going and doing a special topic on the agenda of a principal's meeting or a PLC. So you really have to think about the inner workings of your district. Not everyone has the ideal, you know, however many in-service and PD days that, that are just blocked off. Getting creative and getting into the flow of how your teams work um, and building the right community that works for your school or district is really key. And we've seen all sorts of different options there. So we can help help with that as well. Yep. And Heidi, that's a great point because the admin permissions that we just mentioned earlier, you do have additional reporting ability. So when you are in there, you can actually see where everyone is going through the app, what types of things that they're doing. So and even if we're a teacher, thanks for bringing that up. We have teachers that just come into chat and just say, you know, my, my district doesn't quite have anything organized for me yet, but do you see anyone else at my grade level in my district that's using Writable? And we can match you with a, a peer. You know, this doesn't have to be all like district or building down. If you're a teacher that's just starting and you're wondering how do I, you know, kind of plan intentionally and Writable, there's plenty of ways that you can come to these types of webinars or you can kind of sit with a colleague 
and work together. You can share assignments as you prep back together, which is a great option. So kind of no matter, we just want to make sure we know we have both admins at, the, at mm -hmm. all levels on the phone, as well as teachers. There is a way to create that community and kind of build a professional learning plan around what you're doing. So, yeah. Yes. And then the next couple of slides that um, we're projecting here are some referencing the questions that um, when we talked about the different models, these are the things you think about when you think about where is your model going to be? What are you going to do? Are you going to use state or custom writing rubrics? Do you have common writing benchmarks? You know, what are your grading practices right now? What kind of equipment do you have? What technology do the teachers have access to? So we put those together on these next two slides just so that you can take a look at those. It's also important to consider your integrations. Do you have an LMS? Writable integrate seamlessly with School of Canvas and Google Classroom. So it sends the grades back to each of them. You know, where where is your grade, where are your grades going? What is your teacher's expectation? What's their current workflow in their classrooms? And do they know who to reach out to? Again, key technical contents. We have live support for writable, but we also need to know as a teacher, I need to know who do I go to if my technology is not working and what kind of devices do we have? Uh, Heidi, is there anything else you wanted to add on LMS integration? No, I was just going to say, and, and for HMH folks who are using Ed, um, you know, that's just deciding, am I going to use my Ed rosters or am I going to use an LMS? So you really need to decide what is your um, grading culture? Where does your grade book really live in your district? And we notice, you know, the as secondary, you really get more into your LMS and that's fine. Sometimes in elementary, they want to stay, at, you know, kind of in Ed. So deciding on um, if you're an HMH customer, um, kind of deciding, are you going to be using Ed for your rosters or are you going to be using one of these other places? Because there can only be one king or queen of each roster, right? So just thinking through that, mm -hmm. you know, do I want to save that for next year and kind of just focus on building up towards that integration? Yeah. And then um, the next slide is a link to meet with us. So regardless if you're an HMH customer, writable customer, whatever, if you want to talk to us a little bit more about your questions, this is the link, and I believe we're gonna put it in chat for you to schedule a meeting with us. Um, and we will coordinate where you need, you know, who, who needs to be in on the meeting. So don't you worry about that. Let us take the stress off of you. We know you have a lot on your plate and let us do the management of the people on the back end. And then of course we have some slides in here for finding support. So if you look at our support page, you'll notice that we have my next steps. So this is a, a tutorial where you can walk yourself through um, creating your class, importing and creating your class, choosing your journey, preparing your assignment, assigning and guiding grades. So this just helps you think through the workflow of what it looks like most uh, typically in Writable. Then the middle, all of our support documents are right there. We have a very robust help center. So everything that you might need to know is pretty much in there. And then to the right, if you look at that, that's our live support. So don't forget that. Um, please send us a message. We look at it, it says our user reply time is a few minutes. We have a team of previous teachers and, and key district people who have been in um, other jobs that are willing and ready to support you. And, um, and sometimes they jump on a screen share. So we just wanna make sure that you're aware that you have these resources just at your fingertips. Yeah, and then, and then this is the slide through. Heidi was referring to. <laughs> yeah, so this is just if you are set up as an admin and writable and hopefully someone shared in the chat the form that you would need to um, fill out if you want to be an admin on your license in writable, but it's mostly helping you see reporting and it's helping you, um, you know, share the, the important kind of assignments and assessments that you're building out with a wider team. It, you can do other things like add more admins and things like that and team grade, which is a little bit more, you know, calibration focused. But those are the two main things that I would say people start with is I want to see the reporting so I can growth monitor across my whole district or school. And I also want to be able to share and make some curriculum. So, yeah. Well, thanks for joining everyone. We loved um, interacting with you guys. And I'm going to go back up to just leave this for folks as they're logging off, which is our calendar invite.